Hey guys, how's it going? So today I am eight weeks pregnant, and if this isn't the cutest chalkboard yet, I don't know what is. <laughs> Props to my husband for making this. It is so cute. I love it. Anyway, so much has happened this week. I've got a lot to talk about. But first I'm going to tell you my symptoms and what I've been experiencing this week. Nausea has been really weird this week. Um, as long as I'm eating like every two hours on the hour, then I don't experience nausea. This baby wants me to eat all the time. Uh, Kenley was the opposite. Kenley, I had zero appetite. I did not want to eat anything. I lost eight pounds with her. I was so I was so turned away by food. Carly, my appetite didn't change at all. And this baby, I want to eat everything. And it's all the time. And if I don't eat, then my stomach bothers me and I get really nauseous. And then if I do eat, whenever, you know, I feel nauseous and then I eat after that, it gets worse. And I'm very nearly running to the bathroom. But as long as I keep food on my belly, I'm fine. I don't feel tired anymore this week. It's only if I don't get a good night's sleep, which hasn't been a whole lot this week. I think there's only been like two or three days where I didn't sleep that well. But otherwise, I've been feeling pretty much myself. If I could just get this nausea to go away, I would feel... Like I wasn't pregnant at all because I don't have a belly yet. <laughs> and, well, not really. And I'm not feeling any baby kicks yet or anything like that. So I would almost feel not pregnant if this nausea would just go away. I'm not craving onions anymore. Thank God. Um, I think I said that last vlog too. But it's still true for this one. I'm not craving onions anymore. I am, however, craving pineapple. I love pineapple. I want to eat it all. Devin's buying me all kinds of cans of pineapple and I love him for it because I just want to eat it all. <laughs> Other than pineapple, I'm not really craving much of anything else. Anything that is like fresh fruit or vegetable, I I'm good for. One day I wanted sour candy. That sounded really good to me, so I got sour candy. But mostly my cravings have been pineapple. I really, really want pineapple. My boobs don't hurt. My nipples don't hurt. Sorry for the TMI, but I've told you guys before, I keep it real. I really do. My nipples don't hurt. My boobs don't hurt. My back doesn't hurt, unless I sit uncomfortably, of course. But um, none of that hurts anymore. I do feel a little bit hormonal. I went to the hospital to get my labs done because when I went to my first prenatal appointment on Wednesday, they gave me my labs paper and they told me that I could go at any time between now and my next appointment to get it done. It's just easier to do it on weekends. So we went on a weekend, we went today to get my labs done and the lady there was really upset. She was, I could tell that, I could visibly like tell she was not feeling the greatest. So I asked her if she was okay and she practically sobbed and she's like a little boy, four year old boy died in an ATV accident today and I just can't keep it together today. And I just nearly about cried with her. I've cried a couple times this week just out of the blue, just sitting on my couch thinking too much about stuff and I, I cried twice. Um, I'm not used to this at all. With Carly I only cried like a couple of times for one week and I was like seven or eight months pregnant. I think I was like eight months pregnant. And I only cried for one week. And um, that's about it. Otherwise, I didn't, I didn't cry at all with Kenley. So this baby makes me cry <laughs> and makes me crave pineapple. I'm not feeling so bloated this week, but I have gained another pound. Last week I told you it was 152, I'm now 153. Oh guys, um, not used to this and it's freaking me out. And I tell you this every week, but I'm just gonna keep telling you guys this because it really honestly, truly is weirding me out that I'm gaining weight so fast and so soon. I'm just, with the girls I didn't do this until later on, like 10-ish weeks. And I'm not too freaked out though. I mean, I am freaked out because I'm gaining weight early and I'm gaining it kind of fast, like a pound a week. But on the other side of things, I'm not really that freaked out and scared. Uh, I lost a bunch of weight after I had Kinley and I know that I can do it fast. I mean, albeit I wasn't trying to lose weight fast. I was just trying to eat healthier and get 30 minutes of exercise a day. My body just naturally, because I was breastfeeding, naturally lost a bunch of weight. So I know that because I did it once, I can do it again. When I lost all my weight with Kinley, I wasn't just losing one baby's baby weight. I was losing both Carly and Kinley's baby weight. So I can lose those babies. I'm just kind of freaked that I'm gaining so soon, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I keep it this real, y'all. I, I really am. But hey, at least I'm honest, right? <laughs> Something that I've noticed that I'm starting to get a symptom of, it's getting a little harder this week for me to go to the bathroom. 
already. And I didn't experience this with the girls until I was in my third trimester either. This baby, I'm telling you, this baby thinks that I'm already in my third trimester with a side of nausea. That's what it is. <laughs> it's like fast forwarded me to third trimester, only I have no big baby bump. I think it's really strange. <laughs> but it's getting a little bit harder for me to go to the bathroom, so what I'm probably going to have to do or start doing this week is taking some Miralax because it's getting a little bit difficult. I know I've already said that I'm not tired this week and as long as I sleep good. The pregnancy fatigue, I keep waiting for it to hit me. And I keep waiting for that extreme fatigue that I know you're probably like, yep, I know what you're talking about. That fatigue, I keep waiting for that to hit me and it still hasn't hit me. And I'm starting to wonder if it ever is going to because I'm eight weeks today. I have like four or five more weeks in this trimester and then I'm in my second trimester. So I'm really starting to wonder if it's ever going to hit me. And it just might not and I'm really happy about it because <laughs> I can handle the nausea. I, um, I have some amazing ginger tea that I'm going to show you in about five seconds, and it is amazing. If I drink this tea, I feel great. My nausea isn't so bad. What I can't handle, though, is that crazy, tired all the time, have to take several naps in the middle of the day fatigue. I can't, I can't handle that, because I'm not me if I'm that tired. And I'm just really, really happy that I haven't dealt with it yet. Hopefully, probably won't have to. <laughs> When they say all pregnancies are different, they, they mean it. It's absolutely true. All pregnancies are different. Carly and Kinley are pretty close. Their pregnancies aren't 100% down to the symptom the same. Um, I don't know anybody who, you know, experiences that. But they're pretty close. This baby, however, is very much different. Um, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> now to show you guys this awesome tea that I uh, found at Walmart. It's called Gingerade. And it's really good. Um, it's not overpowering like you think it's going to be. That's what I thought in my head. I was like, oh, this is going to taste like I just licked a ginger root. It really doesn't. It's very subtle. And it, it, I think it even has some lemon. Yes, it has some lemon in it. And what I do is I just put a little bit of honey in it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> That's really all you need, just a little bit of honey, and it makes my nausea go right away. I don't like to drink it in the middle of the day. I just don't like hot tea in the middle of a summer day. That. I just don't. But I drink it first thing in the morning and sometimes I'll have it at night with dinner if I'm in the mood for it or if my nausea is that bad, I will. But this has been a lifesaver. I looked up all the stuff in the back and um, it said that it was pregnancy safe. So that was like the green light for me. So love this stuff. Really recommend it if you're a tea drinker. Or even if you're not, you really could get like used to the taste of it. It's not that bad. I really like it. As for um, if I think if it's a boy or a girl or not, judging by how I feel, my symptoms and all that, I really don't know. Really kind of don't want to take any guesses. I just want to be surprised when I go to the ultrasound, which I have that ultrasound scheduled already. I'm not telling you when it is because I'm, I'm going to tell you guys later on when it gets closer to time. And I guess I just want to be surprised when I get there. And I don't want to have any build up expectations of what baby is or isn't when I get there. I kind of want to just be, get there and be happy and be excited in the moment, if that makes sense. So if you guys have already seen my first prenatal appointment vlog, then you already know that we saw a baby for the very first time. I know there's not much to see. There really isn't. Baby is so teeny tiny and its little legs and arms haven't really formed that well yet and it's just so tiny. But just seeing it there and seeing that it's healthy and it's in the right place and we got to hear its little heartbeat, that was so relieving and it was so, I don't know, ultrasounds are just awesome because it's just such a great relief knowing that your baby's okay. And if you're a mom, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just such a relief to know that baby's okay and they're squirming in there and they're healthy and their heartbeat's okay. Um, I, it was just so exciting knowing all of that this week. And we got our first two little pictures. Um, they, ultrasound Tech, I already told you this in my first prenatal appointment vlog, but I will link it down below if you've missed it. Ultrasound Tech said that baby is measuring two days behind. This was taken at 7-4 and a baby was measuring 7-2. They've changed my due date from February 25th to February 28th. However, I don't know why because I know lots of women who go into their first ultrasound and baby is measuring a day or two here or there one way or the other and their due date doesn't change. And I know what day I conceived because, well, I just know what day we conceived and I don't know why they changed it. I, however, am not changing it because I know my body. And with the girls, I went early. I went. At, I had them both at 37 and 3. 
So if I even make it to February 28th, it'll be like a really big, great surprise. I'm just going to put it like that. It'll just be a really awesome surprise if I make it to February 28th. I'm not going to change my due date from February 25th to 28th only because I've been doing pregnancy vlogs every Saturday and it's not a huge change. It's not like it's a big drastic change. Now if I were behind in like a week or so, I would be changing my due date. But it's just a couple of days. I just know so many doctors who wouldn't change the, the due date over a couple of days. So I'm going to keep my pregnancy vlogs every Saturday. At least they're going to be filmed every Saturday. And I'll just be pleasantly surprised if we make it to February 28th. <laughs> Another exciting thing that happened this week is this. I bought this baby's pregnancy journal. Now, if you've seen my four-week pregnancy vlog, you know that the girls have their own pregnancy books. I have one for all my kids, and I wanted them to have their own book, something that was very unique to just them. I didn't want to just buy the same book three different times. The same book, different kid. I wanted all of my kids to have a different book, so this is this baby's. Here, I'll show it to you. This book is kind of like my other two smashed together and made this. <laughs> There's um, qualities of both that are in this that I like. I'll give you a for instance. In this book, there's a pregnancy timeline. It gives you a timeline of every month and things to do in that month. I think that's really cool. There's a place right here for important phone numbers right there. I know all the important phone numbers, so I didn't write them in there. <laughs> it's got a family tree for your family tree. It has um, a list of baby names. I'm not telling y'all my baby names yet, so that's why I'm kind of putting the book back here. <laughs> and it even has a place for your doctor visits, and it's at every trimester, and it's all in the same area. I love that. With Carly's pregnancy book, I've showed it to you guys, all of the doctor's appointments are categorized by trimester. There's a spot in the first trimester for your first trimester doctor appointments. There's a spot in your second and your third trimester for those appointments. But this book has it all in one thing. It's weeks four through eight where you're supposed to see your doctor every four weeks and it has that. I've already written <laughs> this past week as you can see. Um, this is weeks 28 through 36 over here and then 36 to delivery. And then back here is a little place for after your due date. See? This is for after your due date. I really like that. I really like that it's all in one area. It's all in one spot and you don't have to keep flipping through the different trimesters to read them all. I like that it's just all right there. I just really like that this book breaks it down by month and it gives you things to write in for that month and um, it asks you like what you did and how you prepared for baby and that kind of thing for that month. I really like that. I think that's cool. I like my other two books as well, but I really like this one too. If I had to pick just one book out of all three, uh -huh. hmm. uh, probably this one. <laughs> no offense, Carly and McKinley, but McKinley is a li hers is a little bit too vague. And Carly's is very extensive. It's very much detailed. And this one is kind of like a happy medium. This one I really like. I like this book a lot. Now I'm going to do a belly shot and show you guys what my belly looks like this week. So this is where we are at eight weeks today. Look at the little gummy bear. Just to give you guys an idea of where the bottom of my belly is. This is the bottom of my belly. So I'm starting to pooch out a little bit. Fair warning, when I hit about 12, 13 weeks, I'll get a belly. I think with Kimley, I started getting a belly at like 12 weeks. So I'm going to guess about 12, 13, maybe 14. That was when I'll start getting a belly belly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.